Hi, we Bob here, and in this video we're talking about how complicated is your drawing process? Do you follow methods? Do you just go with the flow? Um, and I'm going to talk about my methods and what works for me, what doesn't work for me. This is my most recent drawing. It was based on a kind of older style front cover of magazines. Uh, it was a girl, and then I was drawing the eye. Um, and I looked at it and I tried to figure out if I was happy with it at this stage or not, if I'm finished with it or not. And I decided to take a wee bit further. So what actually happened is I zoomed right in and in Rebel 5 we've got this cool feature, Rebel 5 Pro anyway, called Nanopixel. I believe Rebel 5 is about £86 at the moment, so it's on 30% off for anybody interested. But you do need a good computer for Rebel 5 and I've got a previous video talking about the requirements. So Rebel 5 Nanopixel feature, which you can see here, is a great pro feature. It allows you to zoom right in on your canvas, see the fibres, and you can, when you turn it off, you can see the difference. You can see the pixelated uh, image as you would with any picture that you zoom in on, you eventually get to the pixel level. But in this case, you see the fibres and it's a lovely way. I've never seen it before. It's a strange feature for anybody to include, but it works really well. And I decided to paint at this level where you can't really make straight lines. You are kind of just moving light and shadow. And it wasn't easy, but I got this result and it looked like a movie to me. It reminded me of a movie. So I then proceeded to intentionally zoom out and draw other movie references. Um, and there is at least another 10 intentional movie references. There are a few more from memory. The end result was this kind of space astronaut girl with these movie references plugged in, giving some detail to the face. And I was quite happy overall with how it looked. But can you spot the movie references? If so, let me know in the comments. Give me the list of the 10 or the 12 or the 13 or the 14. Or is there ones that I've drew and not even realised I've, I've drawn? So for this drawing, I really enjoyed the process of drawing. I didn't overthink it. I just started drawing, as you can see in the speed paint here. Just start drawing based on a reference I had, which was this old magazine cover. I think it's an old magazine cover, not quite sure. And sometimes when we're learning to draw, we're looking at all these tutorials and methods. And some of my videos are step by step, do this step, do this step. And I've tried those kind of tutorials myself. And if I'm being honest, they're, they're just not the way that my brain works, especially with drawing. I was trying to draw Prey, which is a new Predator movie the other day, and I just couldn't get into the drawing. I was trying to use a kind of method of measuring the whole features. Instead of just looking at the drawing and figuring out what I was doing myself, I decided to try and employ some of these methods. And as I says, they just don't really work for me. So the moment I'm looking at this book, I've got an art book called Keys to Drawing. And in the introduction, it talks about a cowboy going out to face this expert gunslinger. So just imagine the scene. This guy, cowboy, is at the bar. He's had a few drinks of whiskey. And this big hotshot gunslinger comes out and challenges him to a quick draw contest at noon. And on his way out the, the saloon, his friends are badgering him in his ear saying, oh, do this, do this. Step one, get out of the sun. Step two, make sure he's blinded by the sun. Stand to the right, stand to the left. And it's just, the guy goes out and he's totally confused by all these uh, pointers, these tips that these people have given him. He didn't just rely on instinct. And, and there's a place for instinct. There's a place for methodology. And I think it's really going to be down to yourself to determine how do you draw. This is my experience with drawing methods. Um, I've tried the Loomis method. I've tried um, Hamrib, who is a great artist. She's a beautiful artist. Um, her work is outstanding. Um, she's got a great channel, so definitely check that out. But she did this method and I tried to follow and it worked quite well. I got some decent results. But ultimately, I kind of need to just use it as a pointer because when I follow these things too rigidly, I just get confused in my brain. It takes the fun out of drawing and eventually I just give up because it looks rubbish. I try, it looks rubbish and it's just not something that works for me. Ultimately, tip one is to draw stuff and to draw stuff that you love to look at. So to get your motivation up, for me it's movie posters, for me it's sci-fi, it's neon worlds, it's something different, it's something odd and that's what really gets me into the zone. And sometimes I get to the end and I realise I've got to the end and I've drew something that I'm really quite pleased with, for example with this eye and this girl 
and I realise I don't actually know how I got here. I just pick random brushes. I don't really stick to particular brushes. I know what brushes will give me a specific effect because I've used them that many times. So I'll go to those brushes. I don't really think about it. I just go and get them and use them. And to do a YouTube tutorial step one, step two, step three, I find it almost very... It restricts me to how I draw. Um, to try and think from a, another person's perspective, how would they draw? What would they, what would they need to know to get the same results? Drawing methods, to me, sometimes it feels like there's too many cooks, there's too many methods, there's too many steps. So my method tends to be a lot more loose at the beginning rather than structured. Um, and as a drawing process goes along, I usually tweak the drawing, look at shapes um, until it looks good to my eye. And that means sometimes deleting hours of work where I got to a point and I'm like, nah, that's not what I really wanted to do. And I'll, I'll, I'll go for a different layer, which is the great thing about digital art is I can just do a stage drawing. I like it at this point, stage, copy paste the layer and happy days. And then try something. And as I say, that's the great thing about digital art is the ability to just make a new layer and copy the layer where you are and then move the drawing on beyond that point. And you can then go back to the original one if you want to. And it is just, for me, art is just a personal thing. It depends how you learn, it will depend what you look at, it depends on how your body is structured, how your hand leans on the tablet. So whenever somebody's drawing their method, they're drawing it with their body structure. And I just think sometimes our body's not really looking at the same thing that they're looking at. So it's a good method, but you've kind of got to tweak it to how you want your method to be and over time that will develop you'll just it'll just click um, and if it doesn't you can always go back to the method but hopefully you find what you like to draw or what you're good at drawing challenge yourself but ultimately art's meant to be fun it's meant to be something that you enjoy doing and as i say it's from doing all these methods it really has sucked the soul out of drawing for me quite a lot of the time so this week it was just about i've been drawing this eye and this girl for it took me about six hours approximately to draw that and I've really enjoyed drawing it, I've really got a buzz out of drawing it, I've enjoyed looking at all the movie posters that I could incorporate into it and it just brought that love to then come back and start drawing again. So drawing is not always a set of instructions and if you don't learn this way just realise that, realise that no matter how somebody draws and teaches you it's not always the right way for you and the way that you want to do your art. And for me, that's what I've found. It's just, for me, I like to sculpt my drawings as I go along. Some people like a full image and then they'll colour it. Um, other people are just so precise at their drawing. And, and that's where somebody trying to tell you on YouTube how to draw just doesn't always work. It might work for some people and it doesn't work for others. Tip two is to look and feel around you. Um, when I was doing this YouTube script, if you want to call it that, I'm kind of following it loosely. I was thinking to myself, not everybody who sees draws, because I'm sure there's blind people who draw, and I'm sure there's some people who, it's similar to deaf people who play music. There was a an old uh, percussionist, can't remember her name for the life of me, but she used the vibrations through her feet to know what she was playing, and she couldn't hear the music, but she could feel the vibrations, and the vibrations felt good. So I was thinking to myself, what if you don't see? So every time I'm talking about visualising something, you may be somebody who's blind to paints and perhaps paints in pastel where you can feel the structure of the drawing. Maybe after it dries, you can then feel or, or maybe you use some sort of paste. And it, for those people, it must be... It's an interesting topic about art from people who don't visually draw art. So... Art really is about you using the senses that work for you. It may be a song that brings a feeling to your head or an image that you see that makes you feel a particular way. Looking through this book just now, there's a great line in the introduction which talks about the book being designed to be read in a traditional way. So the author states, like, start the book at the beginning and go to the end, but he then adds on, but I invite readers to follow any sequence which best suits them. The point of these tips is to follow your path and figure out how you draw. People often say how they cannot draw, but is that true? Or is it just that they can't draw the way that people tell them they're meant to draw? And they can actually draw, but they just need to figure out what works for them. And for me, that's definitely a true statement. When I first started out in art, 
there was this one drawing this one drawing that really drew me in and i was like how could somebody draw something so amazing it is utterly beautiful and amazing and it was a girl a girl with an orange in front of her eye and i'll put the image up on the screen but it was from deviant art um, something i don't use anymore i use pinterest to find my references but I just, the main issue was I was looking at this drawing thinking, I, I can't imagine ever being able to draw something like that. And it just overwhelmed me looking at it. I was just looking at it going, how, where do you begin? How, how do you begin? The main issue here is that I was focusing on this fantastic drawing, but my focus was on the whole piece. When I draw now, I'm trying to keep my focus on basic shapes so I can concentrate on getting them to look the way I want them to. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes not so well. But for example, in real life, recently went on a trip to Fort William in Scotland and we got on the train to Malaig, which is also known as the Harry Potter train. So if you watch Chamber of Secrets, you'll see Ron and Harry in the wee blue car flying over what's known as the Glenfinnan Viaduct on their way to Hogwarts. So we decided to go get this train. It was a, it was a present. We all had a great time. But if I pause the video going across, I'm just going to talk about some of these shapes. I'm really looking at the train to begin with. How am I going to draw this train? There's two lines that go away from you and they get thinner in the distance. So I'm going to draw that train shape first. I'm not going to concentrate on anything else in the drawing except these two lines. Making them look generally as to what I can see with my eye. And then I'm going to move on to all the other shapes from the steam to the clouds, to the mountains in the background, to these these arches in the viaduct, and really concentrating on how is each of these shapes, what do they look like individually. So if you can get your mind, and if you're a visual person, you can look at this image and you can see this viaduct as just an arch, but look at where the line starts and where the line finishes, and don't concentrate on anything else, but that's all you're trying to focus on drawing. And you can sketch and that's the beauty of sketching is just be very rough, be very, be very loose, if that's what works for you. Again, like I says, this is how I work. I'm looking at these shapes as individual shapes. Eventually they will make up an image. And so after 17 minutes, I've got something that looks sort of like a train going over a bridge with arches. It's not the best drawing in the world, but it's a good sketch and it's a good point to start at. For me, that's how I work. So give it a go, it may be something that works for you, but look at each shape in turn. Don't concentrate on 50 shapes, because you can only draw one shape at a time. Don't be worried about methodologies, don't get too sucked into beginners and how to draw this. Because if you just watch one video on how to draw a tree, then you're only ever going to be able to draw that specific tree. You're never actually going to be able to draw trees of your own, because you're too busy thinking of the method that this person may have used to draw the tree, to draw whatever it is they're telling you to. On that note, I'm probably going to be telling you how to draw trees in a future video and you can just ignore everything that I say. So, if you want other tips, there's a video up in the corner. If you want to see a video on colour theory, which I think is pretty good, um, it's up in the corner as well. Thank you for everybody who's watching, subscribing, and Wee Bob is out. <laughs>